Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, I hope you are all doing well. In this video series I will show you how I made this Morningstar weapon model in Autodesk Maya and Substance Painter. In this first part of the video series we will see how to make the model in Autodesk Maya, so let's get started. So here we are in Maya. First let's import the reference image from the front view. And then adjust it properly, so that we can have clear visibility of the reference image. And then keep this image in a layer, and make it as reference, so that we cannot move this image accidentally. Now then, let's start modeling this weapon. Create a sphere, and turn on X-ray mode and wireframe mode. And now, move it up, and position it properly with the reference image. Let's keep the sphere in the center of the x-axis, and adjust the reference image accordingly. And now let's create this handle part. Take a cylinder, and now from poly cylinder 1, let's give it subdivision of 10. And then scale it down from the middle to match the width of the reference image, then scale it from y-axis and match accordingly. After that, go to face mode, select all the faces, deselect the middle faces, and then delete the top and bottom cap faces. And now, go to edge mode, select all these edges, and then apply bevel on them. After that, turn off chamfer, and then reduce the fraction value to bring all the edges closer together at the same time. And in this way we will get this hard-edged cylindrical shape. And after that, go to edge mode, select the top edge loop, then extrude out, and then adjust it according to the reference image. And then give supporting edges, by applying bevel on the corner edge loops, to hold the sharp edges. And now do the same thing for the bottom edge loop as well. After that, let's keep these objects in a layer, and rename the layer as model. And now, let's create this grip part. Create a cylinder. Bring this down here, and scale it down to match the width of the reference image. Now go to face mode, select the top and the bottom face caps, and then delete them. Then select the edge loop and move them to match the reference image. And now hide the visibility of the model layer. And now let's create then swirling edge flow of the grip, similar to the reference image. 
Now select the object and make it center pivot. Then hold shift, right click, and choose insert edge loop tool option box. Over here, click on reset tools to bring back the default settings. Now from here, click on this multiple edge loops, and for the number of edge loops, make it 50. And then click on the object, to create 50 edge loops with equal distances. And now, go to edge mode, and then drag and select all the edge loops, except the top and bottom edge loops. And now, go to create, choose sets, and then click on sets. And now if you open the outliner, you can find a new set is created. If you right click on set 1, and choose select set members, then it will select all the edge loops of the object, except the top and bottom edge loops, which we created just now. And now, go to face mode, drag and select all these faces, then hold shift, right click, and choose poke face. And now from outliner, select set 1, right click on it, and choose select set members. After that, hold shift, right click and select delete edge. And it will create the swirling edge flow of the object, without damaging the shape of the mesh. And now, go to face mode, and select two simultaneous edge loops like these. And then, apply extrude on them, and give some thickness. Now select the top faces and delete them. Do the same for the bottom faces as well. And now, I will adjust the middle edge loops to give it some irregular flow of the edges. And now, let's create these spikes on the sphere. Create a cylinder, then delete the bottom face cap, and then go to vertex mode, and scale them down from the middle to make it a cone shape. After that, place the spike mesh on the top of the sphere, and scale it properly to match with the sphere. And now, after adjusting the height and width of the spike, isolate only the spike mesh, and then set the pivot point at the bottom of it. Then create some edge loops in between. And now, let's create the rest of the spikes. Select this one and press Ctrl D to duplicate, and then move it aside. After that, go to edit, and from here select duplicate special option box. I will reset it to bring back the default settings. And now, I will make 12 copies of this object. And now, select this sphere. But first change this from modeling tab to animation tab. Now go to vertex mode, select this middle vertex, shift select one of the spike mesh, then go to Constrain, and select Point on Poly. And this will snap the spike mesh, to the vertex of the sphere, pointing on the same direction. Now, this spike mesh is constrained with the sphere. If we move the sphere, the spike will move along with it. 
But if we try to move only the spike, and then try to reposition the sphere, then the spike will snap back to its original position. That's because the spike is constrained with the sphere, and in the channel box we can see there are constrained keys for the spike. To remove the constraint, go to edit, then delete by type, and then select constraints. And now, we can see the constraint keys have been deleted, and then, we can move the objects, and make changes on them. I will undo couple of times to bring back the objects to their original places. And then I will push the spike little bit inside the sphere. And now, do the same thing for the rest of the spikes. Select one of the vertex, shift select the spike, and press G to repeat the last command. Now after placing the spikes properly on the sphere, drag and select all the objects, go to edit, then delete by type, and then select constraints. After that, push back each of the spikes inside the sphere a little bit. The modeling part is complete now. In the next video we will do the UV unwrapping of this model. Stay tuned for the next video. So guys, I hope you like this tutorial. Subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications first whenever there is any new video in my channel. Feel free to ask me anything regarding this video in the comments section. Stay safe, and I will see you on the next video.